Hey, this is Brooke. Hi, it's Vicki. And today we're going to talk about echo and sepsis. And we all know why we do ultrasound in the assessment for patients who are in shock. We want to identify a source. We want to determine the patient's volume status. We want to see uh, how they are with fluid responsiveness, and we use ultrasound to guide our treatment. However, with once you diet, once you make the diagnosis that somebody has sepsis, um, there are some guidelines out there to help us, and we are always trying to um, do right by our patients and make sure they get everything they need once you make the diagnosis. And the Surviving Sepsis Campaign recently put out um, uh, new recommendations based on new evidence. New evidence that we, of course, in the ultrasound world have known for years. That's right. <laughs> and here, and now they're saying you must document your reassessment of volume status and tissue perfusion. And you can do that by doing a repeat focused exam, or you can do two of the following. You can measure the CVP, you can measure the SCVO2, you can do passive leg raise or fluid challenge. And with that, as uh, many of you know, sometimes there's ultrasound ways you can use to augment this maneuver. Um, one being carotid flow time and another being carotid VTI, the delta VTI. But we'll save that for another screener. And um, finally, the Surviving Sepsis Campaign recommends actually that you can use bedside cardiovascular ultrasound. Yes. And that's why it's so sparkly. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. And so, you know, once you've already determined the patient has sepsis, when you want to, you look at the heart and you want to determine um, the overall global cardiac function. It's not, uh, and this is more so to help you with your fluid management. So here, just to kind of quickly go over uh, global cardiac function. When you look at the heart, especially in the parasternal long view. Um, you don't determine the specific uh, ejection fraction. You just want to say, is it normal? Is it slightly decreased or severely decreased? This is an example of normal EF, where the ventricular walls are contracting symmetrically and the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve is hitting the septum. And you can see that everything is thickening nicely and that the chamber, the end diastolic volume of the left ventricle, is about 30% less then at full, at, um, uh, full relaxation. So that also helps you kind of just estimate that this is a nice, normal, uh, functioning heart. And here's a parasternal short view of a heart with normal EF. You can see that um, the, the parasternal short view, the left ventricle, is contracting symmetrically and everything's thickening together. Um, usually we would be a little bit lower than this, kind of just at the level of the papillary muscles. But again, when it's normal and you see that change and that thickening so symmetric and um, um, even, then I think that's reassuring. And this is an example of um, a heart with slightly decreased ejection fraction. So here you can see that this part of the left ventricular wall is contracting okay, but the septum isn't moving very well, and the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve isn't quite hitting that septum. So I, we would call this a slightly decreased EF on this heart. And if you were fluid resuscitating this person, you would also note, just um, as an aside, that this valve leaflet right here is really thick and not moving very well at all. And so again, this just raises the um, awareness on the part of the clinician that when they're fluid resuscitating someone that this may be someone who has trouble with quick boluses of fluid um, and so you just want to be on the alert for looking for pulmonary edema. And again here is a parasternal short view of a heart with slightly decreased EF. Uh, you can see that the ventricular wall is not contracting symmetrically. It's thickening um, at different proportions here. And the septum, again, is much thinner and not thickening as nicely. And this is an example of a heart with severely decreased EF. I think it's much easier to see here where the um, myocardium just isn't moving very well and the mitral valve leaflet is nowhere close to the septum. And again, remember, the same patient at dis different phases in their um, resuscitation can have either normal or decreased or severely decreased myocardial function. And that's one of the hallmarks of sepsis. So knowing the difference and seeing the difference between these three is really helpful to know where you are on that curve. 
And once you identify that somebody has sepsis and you know that this is what their heart looks like, then you may want to reconsider giving them two or three liters of uh, normal saline right off the bat. Just be a little bit more ginger with the fluids. And also maybe adding pressors a little early because if their uh, myocardial function is down but their um, perfusion is not great, they may need a little more beta agonist instead of um, uh, just more fluid. And more importantly, when, when you make the diagnosis of sepsis right off the bat, sometimes it's very obvious and sometimes it's not so obvious. And so when you have a patient that comes in who's just maybe lethargic, altered, they're elderly, it could be anything in the world, if you do a bedside echo, um, this, it can help you identify sepsis a lot sooner. So this paper from uh, the Shock Journal uh, describes diagnostic accuracy of left ventricular function for identifying sepsis among emergency department patients with non-traumatic, symptomatic, undifferentiated hypotension. And the findings of this article really show how the sensitivity for bedside echo for the hyperdynamic LV is not great. It's 33%. So you can't rule it out um, by doing this test. But if you see a hyperdynamic heart, it's 94% specific. And the positive likelihood ratio is 5.3. And if you think about that, in a lot of tertiary care centers, you know, we're getting a lot of sick patients who have multiple comorbidities. And so undifferentiated hypertension already has a high likelihood for um, infection as the etiology. But this just helps to point you to the fact that if you're seeing a hyperdynamic left ventricle, you should really be um, aggressively looking for a cause for that and probably also starting antibiotics as, as, um, as outlined in the surviving sepsis campaign. So here's an example of a hyperdynamic left ventricle. And the definition of a hyperdynamic heart is where you see small chambers um, and the left ventricular walls are kind of touching each other where they're kind of kissing here. And you can see that the myocardium is just is empty. There's no fluid there. And, and the difference here is that th this is almost 100% ejection fraction, and so this is not a normal ejection fraction, but this quote-unquote hyperdynamic um, heart that should raise the suspicion for sepsis. And here's just another example of a hyperdynamic heart. You can see, again, um, the ejection fraction is near 100%, and the ventricular walls are touching each other. Uh, here's just a side-by-side -side example of normal decrease, severely decreased in hyperdynamic um, LV function. And this will be on our website if you guys need it as a reference at any point. So just some take-home points. A hyperdynamic heart does not equal normal glo global cardiac function. It's actually increased global cardiac function, and it can change throughout the course of somebody who has sepsis. And a, a hyperdynamic heart has small collapsed chambers that could be touching each other during uh, systole. And you can see this in distributive or hypovolemic shock, but more importantly, it's highly specific, 94% uh, for identifying sepsis. And uh, per the surviving sepsis guidelines, uh, you can use the bedside echo as a substitute for CVP measurement. And also, you can use bedside echo for dynamic frequent reassessments for your patient to guide management for um, septic patients. And stay tuned. We'll follow this up with some ways to look at fluid assessment using ultrasound as well. And keep checking back on our website. And thanks again. Thank Bye. you.